What's up, everyone? I hope you're having a good day, night, morning, whatever you're doing. I hope you're doing it good. We're looking at the Panasonic FZ80. Now, I wanted a super zoom lens or super zoom camera. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money. I definitely didn't want to spend thousands. And I came across the Panasonic FZ80, and I realized it had a 60 times zoom. The lens on this is 20 to 1200 millimeters and it's under $350, it shoots 4K video. I was like, oh, this is perfect, and then that way I have a small form factor, don't have to carry around a super long lens, and yeah, so let's talk some of the specs on this. It has a 18.1 megapixel CMOS sensor, so it is a smaller sensor, but again, we're getting a super zoom out of this. Uh, full manual controls on this, you can shoot raw, you can adjust your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO. So full manual controls if you want. As for video, we have 4K at 30 frames per second. We can do 1080p at 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second. And there is a record limit on the 4K at 30 frames per second of 15 minutes and at 1080p at 60 frames per second of 30 minutes. And once you go down to 1080 30p, you don't have a limit on how long you can record. So like I said, I got the FZ80 because I wanted a super zoom camera. I wanted to be able to zoom into things like airplanes and the moon and the stars and anything that's really far away. And it does have the 20 to 1200, but you can turn on the option to digitally zoom in and you can get up to 6,720 millimeters away. Now, when you're zoomed in at that distance, you're gonna have a ton of noise and grain, but with a little denoiser, degrainer in post-production, you can get the video somewhat usable and still make out what you're trying to video. So that's pretty cool that you can zoom in that far. Some of the features on this, they have like the 4K video where you can take a video and then go back and select the frame of the video that you want to make it into a picture. But they have other features like uh, time lapse, real easy built-in time lapse options. Uh, post focus where it takes uh, every single focus point takes a picture you can go back and select the focus or do some creative stuff with that uh, it does have stabilization you need stabilization with the camera like this because when you're zoomed in that far everything's shaky like if you want to zoom into the moon and you're just gonna move even like a sliver it's gonna be shaky so moon shots and stuff like that you're probably gonna want to get a tripod so this camera also works with the Panasonic image app so you can connect with your phone and you can view what the camera is seeing directly from your phone over a Wi-Fi connection it also allows you to manually focus through the app it doesn't focus the most smoothest but you can focus through the app you can also zoom through the app so if you had it on a tripod outside and you were zooming in and out you can do that directly from your phone and like I said you can see the footage directly from your phone the only thing is you can't make it full screen. They had that problem with uh, other Panasonic cameras, so I don't know if they'll change that. I wish they would because you cannot hook up a external monitor and view the, the footage live, so I wish they'd add that. But those are just some of the features on the camera. So I wanna go over some of the pros and cons that I found with the camera. We're gonna start with the pros. First is the price. Like I said, this is under $350 and you get a super zoom camera. You also get a camera that you can use you know, day to day if you just wanna not take super zoom pictures and things like that. So uh, number two is the lens is small and compact. This is a really small and compact form. It will fit right in a bag. You don't have to have you know a special transport case for a huge lens, an expensive lens. Um, number three, the phone app allows you to view directly from your phone and you can also zoom in and out. And I really like that they allow you to do that. And number four is that you have full manual controls of this camera, which means you can adjust the aperture, shutter speed, 
um, the ISO and you also have the option to shoot raw now as for the cons is that the screen is fixed it does not rotate and that can be a real issue especially if you're thinking you're gonna be pointing this up at the sky maybe like taking some nighttime or moon photos and you're gonna to have to like bend your neck upwards and it just I wish the screen would tilt uh, moving on to con number two is that the HDMI output does not allow you to live feed this on a monitor I really wish uh, that would have been possible now number three is that I really wanted a smooth zoom in and zoom out and sometimes it's smoother than others but if you're like outside on a windy day it's not going to be so smooth zooming in and zooming out number four is the 15 minute record limit in 4k 30p uh, you just restricted to you know 15 minutes so ev after every 15 minutes it will stop you have to let it price sit a second and then you can hit record again. All right, let's take a quick tour around this thing, just kind of see where the buttons and how everything is laid out. So you got the on off switch right here. We'll turn it on, lens cap, pop that off. You got your zoom lever right here. I get zoom all the way out, zoom all the way in. Now these are your different options you want to go through. For instance, here I have like movie mode. You have C, which is custom. This is your panoramic, if you want to take a panoramic photo. Then you have scene selection, which here on the back you can go through and check different scenes like relaxing tone, sweet child's face. That's kind of funny that they did that sweet child's face. So uh, distinct scenery, blue bright sky, you get it. Uh, other options, you have like the artistic or expressive. There's some different types of things to try out there, like monochrome, dynamic monochrome, etc. Then you have your intelligent, this is like your intelligent mode. So if you just get a camera, maybe you want to start in this mode and it will set all the settings for you. And you can do video in this mode by pushing the red record button. Uh, then we have the P, A, S, M. You have manual controls on this. Uh, shutter priority aperture priority uh, so those are basically that we have a <clears throat> couple FN FN2 these are custom um, but you can see that they're set to 4k video uh, you can go in there and change them uh, this is your button you push to take a picture or to focus you push halfway down to focus on the back here we have the this will change to look through the eyepiece and switch it back you have a pop-up flash on top it's got a big old dedicated button you just boom and it pops right up and this will just um, if you're in a manual mode these on the back here will just adjust the manual settings of the camera you have a play button that will allow you to go through and watch your previous videos and then you have like ISO white balance uh, what kind of focus modes that you want to do then you have your time lapse or not your time lapse but you can do a timer for when you take photos so if you wanted to wait two seconds so there's a bunch of shortcuts there then we have display if you want the display stuff to move then you have a trash can throw stuff away so that basically is it on the side here we have a spot for HDMI out and this only works for playback so you you can't do the live feed uh, then we have a charging port. You cannot charge and use the camera at the same time. And there is no charger included, so you use a USB charger to plug it in and charge the camera, unless you buy an external one. Then here on the bottom, we have the spot for the battery and the SD card right next to it. We have a place to attach this to a tripod and a camera strap. A little speaker up here. Um, cold shoes so you can put a flash in if you want to use your own flash and that's basically that as for the menu I'm just gonna run through the menu here real quick uh, just to kind of show you but you have lots of options if you've had a Panasonic like I have the Panasonic 3 or GH3 GH4 GH5 the menus are very very similar uh, just some things you might not have as many options but that, that's for your camera settings. You go down, you see those are for your video settings. And then these are for your custom settings. And you can do things like histogram, uh, highlight, zebra pattern. There's just a whole lot of options. And then we have your setup. Uh, Wi-Fi, if you want to connect to Wi-Fi, that's where you would go. And then 
you would get it your phone out connect it so lots of oh, let's go down here the last one is the playback features and yeah so that's basically a tour of the camera so there you go the fz80 definitely impressive camera for 350 dollars you get a super long zoom allows you to do some creative stuff and do some wildlife photography or look at the moon look at the plains look at the clouds it's pretty neat so for the rest of the video i'm just going to put some random uh, videos I got with my Panasonic FZ80 and I'll also put a link in the description. Thanks for watching.